Hi everybody, I'm Dr. Josh Bobka from First Care Provider. Yeah, I'm Rob Wiley. We're here to talk to you today about Stop the Bleed and tell you how First Care Provider fits into the Stop the Bleed program. It's a simple program, just follow along with what we tell you. Get your tourniquets out, hang on to them while you're doing it, practice along with us as we show you things, and you'll have it in no time. We already commend you for making the decision to come and take a look and educate yourselves. And I'll tell you a little bit about our foundation. You know, we started this several years ago because we were training our first responders and realized, you know what, we need to get a message for everybody. So we started working hard for folks like you because there's no reason that you shouldn't be able to do all the same things that your first responders do when it comes to some emergency situations. I don't know about you, Rob, but for me, it took a little while and I remember, I think, you, I think our partner Bill might have said something about finding your why. Mm -hmm. So, you know, my why is obviously my family and, and, and my friends and loved ones and, and the idea of them having to be dependent on somebody else in time of an emergency really struck a chord with me. And that's why we wanted to make sure that nobody else is in that situation without having the tools to get through it. Yeah, and that's, and that's part of my why aside from my family. It's also, you, you see so many people that when you get to their house, they're just panic stricken and they, you know that they've been waiting for what they feel like is an eternity for you to get there when there's some things that with a little bit of training, a little bit of practice, they could have addressed right away and, and been empowered to help their loved one to help themselves instead of just sitting there hoping somebody gets there in time. Now we're gonna go on to the slides slowly, but we'll just wanna give you a little bit of background about where this, where this program came from and why it's important. There's a lot of people, a lot of agencies that are working really hard right now to figure out what do we do about this violence that we have in our society and how do we improve the outcomes for all of our communities and loved ones to ever have, you know, to be by themselves and have to be in an emergency situation. What is the best way that we can enable you, the viewer, and our public to be part of the solution? So we've got some symbols on the back of the screen, uh, DHS, FEMA, the Committee for Tactical Emergency Casualty Care, the Hartford Consensus, groups of smart people working full time to improve the outcomes of these terrible events. And we've taken all the work of those groups, some of which we work with very closely, and we've used all that information to develop this curriculum to help you help yourself and to help your loved ones. So what is Stop the Bleed? Stop the Bleed is an initiative that was started back during the Obama uh, administration that recognized the fact that with all these traumatic events that were happening, active violence, active shooters, and then natural events, that people were dying of things that could be easily corrected with a little bit of education. And the primary thing that was identified was bleeding to death. How okay. many people bled to death and with what a simple intervention could solve that problem. What intervention? The intervention mostly we talk about <laughs> is tourniquets. Yeah, tourniquets, well, and and you know when it talk when we talk about stop the bleed and stopping the bleed, you know we have to have one of those uh, something to get people basically to understand that there is something they can do, and I think the the big part of the stop the bleed initiative, and it is an initiative. It's an initiative. It's not necessarily a program, but it's a it's a call to action. It's saying it's okay, police department, fire department, city council, school board, go teach your people. You can do this. Mm -hmm. And whether it is tourniquets or whether it is hemostatic dressings or packing wounds, however you, you hurt yourself, whether it's violence, whether it's accident, whether it's lawnmower, kitchen, you name it, this is something we know that we can prevent and that everybody can do. And I always think about it a lot of, along the terms of like CPR and the AEDs use. Think how everybody's taught CPR in a lot of school systems in the country to graduate high school you have to be certified in CPR yeah, that's great. but you know what CPR is for somebody else this is for you this yeah. is if you get hurt if your family member gets hurt and the leading cause of death in the United States as you well know is traumatic injury absolutely it's not heart attack it's traumatic injury so what are we doing to fix the after effect of traumatic injury and the most fixable thing that happens during traumatic injury is critical bleeding totally but when we get to when we get to this, the, since you talked about the CPR, there's the, the cardiac arrest chain of survival. Mm -hmm. If somebody has cardiac arrest on the street, you know, the American Heart Association has pushed hard and we have been very successful in getting the word out to people that we need early defibrillation, we need bystander CPR, we need to turn on the 911 system. And the same is true if it's a non-cardiac emergency, right. if it's a traumatic injury, right? right? Somebody 
falls off their motorcycle, gets hit by a car, whatever happens, mm -hmm. there are things that we can do and we've just never empowered the public to do them. Right. Um, and so what happens is you create this, this um, group of people that actually provide, they're not first responders, but they provide the first care that that person will get. And what they do in those few minutes makes a huge outcome difference as to who goes home and when and how quickly. And the thing, the, the common factor is that no matter what happens, there's already somebody there. Every step. Every step of the way. From the minute the incident occurs, whether it's a car accident or a shooting or an earthquake or a hurricane or a tornado, there are people there that are able to render care while you're waiting for the traditional first responders to show up. Absolutely. And you know, not to mention our first responders don't work every day. Sometimes they're off duty. Right. Our spouses, you know, I'm an emergency physician, he's a fire chief, firefighter. Our other partner, Bill, who you'll meet later, is a paramedic. And, you know, our families know these things. We teach our families and we want to teach yours too. Now, I will give you a disclaimer that this, we have to talk honestly, right? People get hurt and we know that. And one of the reasons that medical, medical courses always make people uncomfortable is, number one, bleeding. Mm -hmm. I think people understand CPR because it's a closed system. I can handle that. People don't feel good about bleeding. Mm -hmm. And they don't feel we, good about touching people. We hate bleeding. We mostly hate touching people. But we need to make sure that you, you know, if this is someone that matters to you from your church, from your school, from your, from your office, you have to be able to take care of these problems and you have to be able to talk about them. So we do have some slides that may make you a little uncomfortable at first, mm -hmm. but understand we're not trying to, to scare you. No, it's we're like more factors. It's we're real. Just, we're just trying to show you here's some injury uh, mechanisms and what you can do for each mechanism to have a better outcome. Yeah, the goal is to empower you to be able to do something about this. Yeah, and believe me, if we can get them, if we can get you to see something now on our video that next time you see something in real life, we'll say, you know what, I've seen that before. Mm -hmm. That's gonna make you that much faster and much, much better. Right. And you're talking about that chain of survival? Mm -hmm. The first link in the chain is the people that are already there when the incident happens, the first care providers. Absolutely. That's who we wanna teach. Absolutely. Now, when this is uh, Stop the Bleed was initiated, you know, this came from a presidential policy directive. You mentioned right. President Obama. And there's been a lot of work, you know, at following these terrible events to try to improve our communication, to try to improve what we can learn and share with each community. And, and one of the main reasons is honestly the economic factor, mm -hmm. right? When bad things happen, it has, a, it has a severe economic factor on these communities. It affects scores and, and, and standardized testing in the school systems. Mm -hmm. It drops enrollment. It prevents people from going out. And the reality is, is you know, unfortunately, that's the intended effect of bad events. But if you have a plan, then you have a choice, right? So if you know what you're gonna do in a bad situation, and you know how to handle certain types of injuries, now you're not worried about going and doing the things and living your life. No, you're, you're empowered. You're empowered. And that's what this is all about. Right. Thanks for watching this introduction to First Care Provider and our Stop the Bleed program. More information can be found at firstcareprovider.org.